Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Learning the Kitchen I want to share with you my take on an Indian classic which is samosa. Now this by no means am I saying that it is the authentic recipe for samosas but these are, this is my recipe for it and for the past four and a half years here at Laura in the Kitchen I have had an overwhelming amount of requests to show how to make some Indian classics and some well-known dishes here. Um, Indian dishes that are well known here in the US. So today I'm going to show you my take on the appetizer that e that's ever so popular and absolutely delicious. Let me take you over the ingredients so we can get started. You'll need some cooked potatoes that I've just cut into about bite sized pieces. You'll need some chopped onion, some grated ginger, what I have here is some chili powder, garam masala, ground cumin, ground coriander, mango powder, cayenne pepper, I've got some coriander seeds, cumin seeds, yellow mustard seeds, a little bit of water, some frozen peas that are going to defrost here, and some chopped up um, fresh cilantro. You also need some salt and some vegetable oil. You could also use ghee, which is cl clarified butter. I'm just going to use vegetable oil because I have it on hand and it's just easy for me to make it. Now, what I'm going to do, I've got a large skillet here with high sides with about three tablespoons of vegetable oil. And in here, I'm going to add my whole spices. Now, what I want these to do is I want these to release their beautiful flavor and start popping. That's when you know they're done and your whole kitchen would just be infused with their wonderful aroma. Now, again, by no means am I saying this is authentic, but I have to tell you, these are fantastic. And when you want to make something a little bit different um, than you're used to, like for me, you guys know that Italian and sort of classic Americans is what I usually make, but I love, and if you follow us on our vlog channel, you know that we love, love, love Indian food. Um, but the closest place is that we go to is about 45 minutes away, and when I'm craving Indian food um, during the week, I make it at home. And these are the recipes that I love. And I'm going to share a few more recipes with you. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait for these to start popping. And then we'll add in our next ingredient. They're starting to pop and it smells fantastic. I'm now going to add my onion and ginger. And what I did with the ginger is I just grated it on my microplane. You can also, of course, chop it. But I like when I grate ginger because I feel like the flavor just sort of I don't know, it runs through the dish a lot better. And now what I'm going to do is just cook my ginger and onion with these whole spices until my onions become translucent and smells absolutely fantastic. I love this filling. In fact, I'm going to use some of it to make samosas tonight and the rest of it I'm going to keep in the fridge and tomorrow morning for breakfast I'm going to top it with a fried egg. Ah, okay, I'm going to wait for these to get nice and translucent and then we'll keep on chucking along. Looking phenomenal. I'm going to add in my cooked potatoes. These are just some regular rusted potatoes that I have chopped up into bite sized pieces and boiled until tender. And I'm just going to stir that around with my oil and spices. And I'm going to add in my ground spices. And this is where the magic happens. This is when you're suddenly going to get hit with this incredible aroma. Everything together is an I don't even know how to explain it other than to just tell you to get in your kitchen and make them. And if you are someone that makes samosas on a regular basis or you grew up eating them, I would really love to know your version of this or what you add or subtract from the recipe. I'm always curious, you know, other people, how they make things because I find that to be the best part about cooking is, and that's what I think a Laura in the Kitchen is, is we share with each other what we like, we share with each other what we grew up eating and how we make it because, you know, sharing is caring after all. Now I have just, you can see, I have stirred my, my spices and my potatoes together and now what I'm going to do is add some water to this because I want the potatoes to heat through and this will take a good 5-6 minutes or about medium heat and you can just take your wooden spoon and just mash them a little bit, mash the potatoes up a little tiny bit because they should be much more I wouldn't say paste, but not so rough and chunky because we are going to stuff these up and if they're too big it could be a problem. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let these cook through for about five to six minutes or until the potatoes have warmed all the way through and then we will finish them off. This is exactly how I want it. Now I'm just ready to season them with a little bit of salt, important because potatoes are so, they, they like they're in need of salt at all times. 
my peas. These are just frozen peas that I've defrosted. Well, somewhat defrosted. They'll continue to defrost in my pan. And some fresh coriander, cilantro. You say potato. I say potato. Stir this all together. It's making my mouth water. I just want to wait for those peas to just about get hit with the heat. And this is exactly where I want I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to put this back into my bowl because it's really important that the filling is cold when you go to make your samosas. So I'm just going to put this in my bowl and I'm just going to set this aside to cool. I'm going to clean up and then we'll get stuffing and rolling and baking and eating. Didn't even plan that. I promise. My filling has been cooling here for about 20 minutes and I am ready to rock and roll. Now, what I'm using as my pastry, although I know it's not what authentically you would use to make a samosa, but I find this to be really easy and it, I just think it tastes delicious and there's no frying involved, I am using some phyllo dough. This is phyllo dough that I buy in the frozen section of my grocery store. They come out flaky, they come out beautiful, there's no frying, so they're really, really easy to make. I've got my oven preheated to 400. I have a baking sheet that I've lined with parchment ready, and I also have some melted butter here. Now, I have my board, um, <laughs> I don't have my board lined properly, as you can see, but that's because I want a lot of surface room for my phyllo. Now, what I'm going to do, and I also have a damp uh, kitchen towel here. I'm going to open this baby up. Now, I know it's not very traditional, but, you know, we do things my way around here. The pastry for my samosas, I am using some phyllo dough. Now, traditionally, you make a specific um, dough for it and then you deep fry them. I don't really want to do that. First of all, I don't want to go through the extra trouble of making my own dough. And second of all, I don't want to have to fry them. So I'm using some phyllo dough. I've got my filling that's been totally cold by now. I've got some melted butter, a baking sheet with some parchment paper, and I am ready to get to work. Now make sure you have a damp kitchen towel near you because you need to cover your um, pieces of your phyllo dough as you work. So I'm going to just take a, a, a sheet of phyllo. As you can see, I have my board on sideways because I want to sort of work this way. And then I want to take my butter and I want to make sure that my butter is, my sheet is covered well with butter. I want every little be, every little piece to be brushed with butter because even though we're not frying them, when it comes to phyllo, it needs a little bit of fat in order for it to really crisp up and develop beautiful color. So once we've done that, this is what you do. And you don't have to be perfect about this. If it breaks a little, it's fine. You're going to fold this in thirds just like so. Okay? Again, don't worry about it being perfect. Nobody cares. Take a little bit of butter. Brush it like so. You mainly just want to make sure that the edges are brushed because that's going to be like the glue. And you want to work kind of fast. And then you take a little bit of your filling, you place it on one corner of, on the corner of one end, okay, like so, and then you take this piece, and again, you're going to have to work sort of quickly, and don't worry if this happens, because look, now you've got a little triangle, you fold it on itself, and then you fold on the opposite side, and now you're enclosing everything, so even if it rips, even if it tears, well, guess what, at the very end, you still have And now you place it on your baking sheet. And now I'm just going to continue to do a few more. I think I'm going to do about six or seven for Joe and I because I really want to save the remaining filling for breakfast tomorrow. And I know that sounds crazy, but trust me when I tell you that with a fried egg is amazing. So I'm just going to keep on chugging along. Here we go. Got my last one. I'm going to do about seven for now. And now what I want to do is I want to just brush the tops with a little more, more butter. And this is, again, going to help get that beautiful golden brown crust and really get them lovely and crispy. This makes, by the way, the whole batch will make between 20 and 30, depending on how much you fill these. It makes a lot. But, again, save that for breakfast with a fried egg. That's all I got to say. Trust me on that one. This is going to go into the, these are going to go into the oven that's been preheated at 400 for about 25 minutes or so. 
You're looking for these to be beautifully deep golden brown and then they'll be crunchy and delightful and then we'll dig in. My samosas were in the oven for around 20 minutes and I've let them cool for about 10 minutes because they are piping hot when they come out of the oven and they are just beautiful. They're golden brown. I, I know they're gonna be crispy. I'm gonna try and see if I can break one open. Oh, look at that. They're still really hot. Hot, very hot. But that is on point. The filling is truly incredible. Add a can of chickpeas to that, and you have like a full meal right there. These are fantastic. It's definitely um, a bit of a twist on a classic, but I think they are just as delicious and they're really easy to make, and they're definitely a crowd pleaser. Go to LaraInTheKitchen.com to get this recipe. I hope that you've enjoyed spending time with me. Give me a thumbs up if you like this recipe and let me know what other recipes you want me to make from whatever cuisine it might be because I do love, um, I love getting inspired by where you're from and the kind of food you ate growing up. Hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.